There's definitely an unmet need in drug resistance and uh, e even in intrinsic de novo resistance. Some patients actually uh, uh, benefit a very, uh, for a very short period of time. We are actually, in this analysis, we describe the rapid progressors. Patients who had progression of disease in less than three months of treatment, they have to come off the study. And so those drugs, by single agent, didn't, didn't work out too well. There were others who had was more the slow progressors, patients who benefited from the uh, sertoracib uh, study drug for a longer period of time, more than six months. Some actually had good response, and then subsequently they progressed. So that's a different biology. And they show that the, the, the cancer somehow outsmarted the drug later on rather than initially. So those are the, the, the patterns of behavior with the lung cancer uh, and colorectal cancers, and we have to understand that to address those needs of the patient so that they can live longer and healthier lives. We have actually mapped out using this technology of, of ctDNA analysis. Uh, we saw uh, the acquisition of co-mutations or genomic acquired genomic alterations. We saw that in lung cancer, about 28% of patients had developed additional mutations in addition to the KRAS G12C at the time of progression. And we saw that those mutations uh, are large, largely uh, belong to several categories, including the receptor tyrosine kinase gene alterations, so-called RTK gene alterations. Those are single nucleotide variations or copy number amplifications of genes such as EGFR, MET, FGFR, uh, and ROS1. And, and those are uh, really a dominant subtype of acquired mutations. But there were other secondary RAS mutations and downstream uh, uh, mutations in the MAP kinase ERK pathway, as well as the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathways. That story is also replicated in colorectal cancer patients at the time of progression. We saw a more diverse uh, genomic landscape of co-alterations developed in the cancer, and that's with shedding of DNA and floating in the bloodstream. We saw those classes of, of mutations, but also saw more. We saw cell, cell cycle arrest pathways, DNA damage repair pathways, and uh, and many others, including Wnt and beta catenin pathways. So a more diverse, heterogeneous, uh, co-alteration uh, and, and uh, potential drug resistance uh, pathways that the cancer uses uh, to, uh, to outsmart the drug. And fortunately, we have also seen some of those mutations are actionable, clinically actionable with available drugs. We use the Onco-KB level of evidence, which is a, a, a genomic tool that was uh, developed by Memorial Sloan Kettering and several other in collaboration with other cancer centers. And this is freely available. And this is a way to characterize the levels of evidence for clinical actionability, whether they are druggable with other drugs. And we found that a substantial portion of patients in uh, potentially up to a third of patients with lung cancer and 16% of patients with colorectal cancers at the time of progression had developed another mutation that could be targeted with another drug. We're not sure because we're using Onco-KB levels of evidence based on any cancer type. So where, if it's actionable in, say, breast cancer, it may not be actionable in lung cancer. But nevertheless, this requires clinical investigation. We saw some med amplifications and BRAF class II alterations being developed in addition to KRAS G12C at the time of resistance, and that potentially a combination strategy uh, uh, could be deployed uh, to shrink the cancer again. And so this lends credence to the combination therapeutic strategy of sotorasib. This includes uh, upstream SHIP2 inhibitors, uh, uh, also EGFI inhibitors uh, in terms of co-targeting uh, KRAS G12C. Uh, in RTK gene alterations. We can also use SOS1 inhibitors to co-target secondary RAS mutations and MEK inhibitors, for example, targeting downstream MAP kinase pathway alterations and mTOR inhibitors for the mTOR uh, AKT PI3 kinase pathway alteration. So this is the basis for the ongoing CodeBreak 101 phase one clinical trial of sotorasib combination strategy. So certainly more research needs to be done, but there is hope on the horizon in this last large-scale uh, CT DNA, DNA analysis would not have been possible uh, without the patients and their families for actively participating uh, in the clinical trial fighting this uh, deadly cancer, once undruggable but now druggable, and also thanks to uh, international collaboration with so many different countries, largely done during the midst of the pandemic. And the countries got together, we leveraged innovative technologies, including telemedicine, remote monitoring, and liquid biopsies, 
uh, that are more patient-centric rather than hospital-centric to advance the science and advance the care. And so this analysis would not have been possible without that spirit of collaboration.